Okay, so my name's Taylor Ricketts. I'm a professor in the Rubenstein School and the director of the Gund Institute, and I'll be giving the last talk. This is a talk that uh, my research lab of students and postdocs have been doing for the last five or six months, trying to investigate the link between biodiversity and ecosystem services. So there have been several talks that touched on ecosystem services today, but roughly they're the benefits that people derive from nature, and here are four of them. Crop pollination, carbon storage by forests, flood mitigation by wetlands, say, and water purification as well. And all of these, most of us assume or hope or think, are rooted in biodiversity. So right, biodiversity is what provides these several flows of benefits to us. And in fact, an increasing number of conservation organizations, both globally, nationally, and here in Vermont, are beginning to move towards this as a goal for some of their work, adding these benefits to people alongside biodiversity per se as the reason they're doing the work they do. So right? it's, it's creeping into the missions of many of these organizations. But how strongly are these two things linked? What is really the evidence between the biodiversity of an ecosystem and its provision of ecosystem services? That's the question we wanted to address. So like I said, over the last several months, um, we collectively have read uh, the 100 top papers, highest ranked papers, in each of those four services that I told you about before. Just to ask, what is the strength of evidence embedded in that body of literature? And here's what we found. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of these pie graphs. The pie graph on the left there is about carbon storage, and the size of the graph is proportional to the number of relationships we found, the number of statistical relationships reported in those papers about the relationship between biodiversity and ecosystem services. And we've coded the wedge of the pie green if that relationship was a positive one, a significant positive one, yellow if it was statistically uh, insignificant, and red if it was significant but negative, right? So according to that graph on the right. So you can see that for carbon, about half the study showed a positive relationship between the diversity of a system and its provision of carbon storage services. About another half showed no relationship, and a very few showed a negative one, right? So severely mixed evidence. Here are the other three, right, to complete the picture. So you can see right away there's much more evidence about carbon storage than any of the other ones. And that flood, or sorry, water purification has about the same distribution, about half positive, half no relationship. The evidence might be on average stronger for pollination, where about three quarters of relationships are positive between the diversity of pollinators and their economic benefit um, as provision providers of ecosystem services. And you can see the kind of the pathetic state of affairs for flood mitigation, right? One study, three relationships, all positive, but still pretty small dot. All right, so the last thing we wanted to do was just look at, break this down into the types of relationships that people were looking at. So this is carbon again, broken into three bits. One is a spatial relationship. They just looked at a map, measured carbon, measured biodiversity, and correlated it across space. The next one is response to management. So that's supposed to be a picture of people restoring an ecosystem, not sort of upholstering an ecosystem. But so if we restore an ecosystem, do diversity and ecosystem services go up together or down together? And lastly, functionally, is there really a mechanistic link between these two? And you can see the bulk of evidence for carbon is down in the spatial, again, half-half. And it's getting more and more sparse the more uh, specific we get about the functional links between these two things. So. Here's the rest of the graph as well. Um, just to say that we know most of what we know about each service or column from one type of relationship or row, right? So all the water purification is functional evidence. All the pollination essentially is management evidence. Almost all the carbon is spatial evidence. So we can talk more about this figure um, if you come talk to me in the break. I'll let it go at that. Other than to say there's two take-homes. One is the evidence is really mixed. We don't often know a priori whether a diverse system will have more ecosystem services than a less diverse one, and that different links dominate for different services, again, the spatial for carbon and so forth. These aren't necessarily paralyzing or bad. The key is to understand when biodiversity and ecosystem services are aligned, not if just if they are all the time. And if different links dominate, to match the evidence of specific links, the evidence we have for it to the specific decision. So if you're making spatial decisions, use spatial information to inform them. Thanks uh, for everybody for listening. This is really what we're trying to do, is understand to the degree biodiversity underpins all these other things we want to know about. That's it for me for my talk, and that's it for this session. So thanks very much.